Hello and welcome to the NEI YouTube channel. It's Network Engineer Info. My name is Eric and today we're getting back into our Network Essentials series and the topic today is what is a router. If you haven't seen the previous video, uh, what is a network that is up on the channel, please check that out. And this is the second video in that series. So let's get right into it. What is a router? So this can have some different meanings. Like I said before, depending on the context, more than likely, you know, you're used to having a router at home to get on the internet from everything from your home laptop to maybe your TV, to your phone, if you're connected to, to Wi-Fi, or you could be hardwired into the network. But generally, you know, people, a lot of people think of a router as something that helps them get onto the internet at home, which is true. Also, you may have interactions with your router at work so uh, if you are working you have internet in some capacity then more than likely there's a router there so generally for most people that's their interaction um, as a network engineer you'll have um, a, a few different situations where you would interact with a router um, and so the question for today is really what is not only what is a router but what is it, is its function within the network what is it doing there and what is its purpose um, besides to just get on the internet, right? Because there's obviously more to it than just that. So let's get into that. So you can kind of think of it like this. Um, a, a router in the network is kind of like the traffic uh, director. So the router has the ability to permit or deny traffic from going um, to other networks within your local area network or perhaps going to networks outside of the network your local area network right and so you know an example of uh, in some internal traffic is you could have two um, separate networks within your internal network so let's say you have um, a wired network where you plug in your your PC or your laptop at home into one particular network and then maybe you have Wi-Fi that's on a different network and so the ability to move traffic or packets as we'll talk about a little bit in between those two networks you're going to need um, a device to do that and that device is a router but then also if we're talking about external from the LAN then the router can um, allow access to go outside of the network so you know, in a sense, you can kind of think of it as a traffic director um, telling the traffic where to go and how to get in between these networks, which again may be local or may be external from your local area network. So here's a concept that I would like to expose you to, and um, this is what's called the OSI model. So this is the uh, Open Systems Interconnect. This is exactly how it sounds. It's interconnecting systems. So this is, um, you know, a framework that's used to um, describe the function of moving data um, through and in between uh, systems. And um, the network is definitely a component of that. But if you think about um, you know, you pulling up um, Microsoft Outlook on your computer, you, you typing up an email, and then you sending that email, and then it um, going to a user, right? There's some stuff that has to happen in between there, but eventually it will end up at your recipient's mailbox, and they receive it, and they open it up, and they read it. And so in order for um, your input to be taken and then... Um, formatted as an email and then moved across the network because that's how it's going to get from point A to point B. Um, and there's some, like I said, there's going to be some steps in between there. But the 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 conceptual model of being able to move that data um, between two systems is is represented in this model. And so there are seven layers here: application, presentation, session, transport, network, data link, physical. I probably should have went in reverse order there because if you look on the bottom, that is actually layer one and the top of that is layer seven. And there are 
these um, they're called protocol data units PDUs um, and they're uh, the method of um, how data is moved at, at each layer of this model so for each layer there is a different PDU um, the router actually operates in the network layer surprise the protocol data unit is a packet or datagram um, what is also going to be of interest to you is the layer below that which is the data link layer that is where your switch is going to operate so your switch is layer two um, your router is layer three data link layer network layer um, and this is something that's uh, you know important um, something that will this model is is often referenced in the real world dealing with IT especially in network you know you'll hear terms like um, uh, you know you know is the problem at layer three or is the problem at layer two um, layer four can be mentioned layer seven um, people generally don't say hey do you have a problem at layer six but um, <laughs> uh, application layers use a lot layer three layer twos um, um, I've spoken a lot so this this model is often referenced in the real world and if you go through some type of professional program for network engineering or really any type of IT services, you'll see this model. For network, you'll see it often, especially in the beginner courses. Um, don't gloss over it. Um, it's one of those uh, fundamental building blocks of understanding how things work together. So, and I personally think it's important, so I would say pay attention to it. It will be referenced uh, in the future. Um, when you when you actually get a job, you know, working in IT somewhere, and so, you know, the important part for this particular um, presentation about the router is that the router is going to be functioning at layer three. Um, layer seven is going to take your user input. Layer one is going to be actually your physical connection, and there's obviously a lot of stuff that has to happen in between, and uh, some 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 deeper um, subject matter review about uh, this model will probably come your way at some point if you go beyond this type of essential series that I'm doing here now. All right, we talked about before, you know, contextually how you might um, interact or what type of router might be present um, at any given time. So if you're at home um, or in maybe a really small office, you might see this router that's on the left. Um, and and this is um, you know kind of a more small compact router that has multiple functions so it may do a little bit more than just routing may do some switching may have a switch embedded into it um, could take wired connections but also do wireless um, that's very common for your home router and so it's it's you know compacting a bunch of functions in additional to just in addition to traditional routing um, into that home router uh, next up here you have an enterprise router this happens to be a Cisco 4k 4400 series um, and you know this is something that will sit on the WAN the wide area network um, of an enterprise and you know it's able to handle more traffic um, you're actually able to run different routing protocols on it and there's a different um, a set of uh, features that this type of router has over a home router um, but m many more features at layer three on this enterprise router than you would see in your home router home router is kind of limited in its function um, and should be because you're, you're generally not doing too much it's generally just kind of giving you internet access um, but the enterprise router is is doing a lot more than that and then to the right you have the service provider router which is has some similar functions to the enterprise router it just can handle more traffic um, there's more port density and there's even more features that can be enabled than the enterprise router um, and generally a service provider is providing a service right so you're providing a service for multiple customers you're able to segment that traffic um, handle higher volume um, there's always there's also some features to the device that makes it a little more resilient gives you a little bit more redundancy and some of the hardware um, as well and so 
uh, if you end up working for a service provider, you interact with uh, a router such as this. This is a, an, a Cisco ASR um, aggregated services router where um, the enterprise router is an ISR integrated services router. So now that we looked at the a few examples of the routers, um, again, some of the functions, once you have a router in your network, um, whether it's that home router, um, enterprise or service provider, provider um, you know, A, it's gonna route traffic between networks, so that's one kind of major function. So if you have two logical networks or more you know, depending on your situation, if you need to move traffic in between networks, then you're going to do that with a router. Um, generally, if you're talking about from a switching perspective, which we'll get into in our switching video next, but you'll have um, a VLAN, which is a virtual LAN, and a uh, one broadcast domain, right? And so generally to one VLAN, you'll have one broadcast domain or one subnet tied to that VLAN. And you'll have multiple VLANs with multiple broadcast domains, but in order to move traffic in between them, you wouldn't do that with switch unless it was operating at layer three, you would do that with a router. So that's a function of a router, something operating at layer three, which is what we're calling a router. Um, you can also, um, it'll also a lot of times be your default gateway. So if the, the method of which that you, you move traffic outside of your local area network is to send traffic to your default gateway and generally that default gateway will be an IP address that is on um, a router right and so um, you've probably seen the default gateway configuration on your computer and if you haven't you can uh, type CMD enter um, into your search box um, type in IP config and uh, if you scroll down, you'll see your IP information. You should see a default gateway. And so that gateway is going to be an IP address um, generally that's on your router. And so it's saying that your default gateway is saying any traffic that is not destined for something in the local network, please send to this default gateway. And that default gateway will be, will be your router. And then your router can make a routing decision on how to send that outside of the network or where it needs to go. And then, as we kind of talked about before, you can think of it as the ingress or egress point into the local network, right? If the router is routing traffic um, in between networks in the local network or, or outside of the network, then that's kind of the, the demarcation point between your internal network and the outside, right? And so there can be additional devices that um, play this role as well, like a firewall or something of that nature. but. Um, you can think of your router um, as the ingress or egress point from your local area network. So one concept I wanna throw your way right now is the concept of the control plane and the data plane. And so we talked about the router making a, a routing decision on where to send traffic. And generally, um, you're going to do that by um, um, populating your routing information base, which is called the rib on the router. So this is basically um, a bucket where you can put your routes in. So you can say um, network A needs to go this direction. Network B needs to go that direction. And the way in which you populate that routing information base, that, that bucket of routes is generally through some type of of routing protocol you, you can configure it manually so you can you can do what's called static routing um, there's also some things that are automatically populated like your connected routes so if you have a router and you have five interfaces five different networks those networks will automatically be in your routing information base because they are um, seen as connected routes to the router you can do static routes to say um, manually type in and say hey for network a go this direction or you can have a routing protocol that does that dynamically. And so the method of, of populating, um, you know, populating that bucket with routes um, is, is done by the control plane. That's where the um, 
the control protocols that um, allow you to build your route table um, that's all done in the control plane. If we're actually talking about moving traffic uh, in and out of the router, then that's your data plane. So there's something called a forwarding information base um, and that is taken from your routing information base from your rib. So rib and fib, so two kind of different concepts, but the actual um, action of taking a packet, we talked about that protocol data unit before, so taking a packet into an interface, uh, making a, de a routing decision based on the forwarding information base and then sending out another, another interface, that's your data plane, actually moving traffic through the device. And so in, um, in, if we think back to the slide where I had the three different types of routers, the, the two on the left kind of collapse these functions into um, kind of one circuit board you can think of. The service provider router actually breaks out that functionality a little bit. It has um, the control plane um, and data plane and everything's connected through a back plane. So it's broken out, but it's still within the same chassis. Um, and uh, but these are kind of two different functions, right? So in cer certain situations, your control plane control protocol could be down, but you could potentially still route through the data plane. Um, but these are two separate functions. Another thing I could throw in there is the management plane. And um, we'll actually go ahead and, and kind of talk about administering the, the router next. It's a good segue. All right, there are a few different ways you can administer a router. Um, one of the most common ways is through CLI, so command line interface. So generally you'll have some type of terminal emulator in which you are um, directly logging into a router and it's taking input from your keyboard, you're running commands, and you're administering the, the router directly um, through a network connection or a console connection directly into the device. Some routers, a lot of your home routers will have a graphical user interface where you can um, use a browser, connect to the device, um, and you can point and click and you know turn on, turn off the various features. Um, even some of the enterprise um, level routers have some type of graphical interface, um, depending on the type of um, service that you're using um, along with the router, um, but that's an option. Uh, API automation, so, so this is really just kind of signifying interacting with the device in a pro programmatic way. So you could be using something like a Python script. Um, you could be using a an application that has some automated functions like um, SolarWinds uh, NCM. Um, uh, but, you know, interacting with the device through automation, which could log in um, via CLI type method or uh, via SSH. Um, and perform functions within a script, or you could be using an AS, uh, an API using like RESTConf, NetConf. Um, and then also, which kind of still falls into the automation category, there's infrastructure as code. And, you know, that is where you have a config file that is the source of truth for the actual router configuration. So if you want to make a change on the router, you actually make it to the config file and through some type of programmatic way you are um, pushing that config to the device but the the point of it is is that you administer the device um, via this config file so if there's a change you want to change an interface IP you would do it within this file and then that config gets translated to the device somehow um, and so these are kind of the four um, main methods that you can use to administer a device and um, the bottom two gets you into uh, programming, um, which is something um, that will probably cross your path the further you go into uh, network engineering. All right, so that brings us to the end of this video. So, you know, this was definitely um, an intro video. There's definitely a lot more to, to unpack about what a router does and some of the functions within a network. But again, this is an intro video. I wanted to um, just expose you to a router on a basic level, but also throw some concepts your way that you will run into 
if you take your journey beyond this uh, essentials type of course. Um, so that's it. I will have another video on switching that will come up next, for look, so look out for that soon.